Welcome to the October edition of CUNA's Economic Updates, sponsored by the CUNA Finance Council. I'm CUNA's Senior Policy Analyst, Samira Salem. In this update, I'll cover recent economic developments and CUNA's latest economic and credit union forecast. CUNA economists met with CUNA Mutual Group's Chief Economist, Steve Rick, during the first week of October to review and update our economic and credit union forecast. We're looking at an economy in the 11th year of expansion. This is the longest expansion in modern U.S. history, and we've entered into the late stages of it. The U.S. economy is fragile. One of the main sources of fragility is trade policy uncertainty, but other sources include declining manufacturing and business investment and slowing global growth. While there is some resilience in the economy coming from the labor market, consumers, and the accommodative policies of the Federal Reserve, if we get forces pushing in the wrong direction, especially if they affect consumer confidence, then a recession in the next two years is much more likely than it has been for quite some time. In this environment, CUNY economists are forecasting that there will be a significant slowdown in economic growth. We're not saying it's recessionary, but the likelihood of recession has risen substantially. If we're wrong and there is a recession, we think it'll be short-lived and not very deep. Our GDP forecast for 2019 remains unchanged. We're still forecasting 2.1% GDP growth for the year. This represents a slowdown in economic growth from 2.9% in 2018. However, we're forecasting a sharper slowdown in growth in 2020. Our forecast calls for GDP growth of 1.5% for 2020. This is down from 1.8% GDP growth in our previous forecast. The long-term trend for the U.S. economy is 2% growth, so 1.5% growth rate is a significant drop below what is considered to be the normal growth rate. Again, we're not saying this is recessionary, but it is an adjustment to the previous forecast, which indicates that we are concerned. The economy is more fragile now. As I mentioned, manufacturing and services sector, as well as business investment, has been declining. We have trade and policy uncertainty and slowing global growth. The silver lining is consumer spending, which re has remained strong and has been driving growth. But if something goes off the rails and consumer confidence is neg negatively affected, then a recession in the next two years is much more likely than it has been for quite some time. The U.S. labor market is strong and a source of resilience for the economy. With a couple of exceptions, job gains have remained consistently strong over the last two years. The pace of hiring averaged 223,000 per month in 2018, and over the first nine months of this year, job creation has registered a healthy 161,000 jobs per month. The most recent jobs report showed that most of the job gains were in healthcare, government, professional and business services, while other major industries showed little change. Unemployment came in at 3.5% for September. This is the lowest it's been in half a century. Unemployment has been hanging out at, ex at an exceptionally low level this entire year. Even those who were previously on the sidelines have been joining the labor market, driving the U6 unemployment rate, which is a broader measure of unemployment, down to 6.9%. This is the lowest level since at least 1994. The unemployment rate is a lagging indicator, so we don't expect the slowdown in economic growth to immediately show up in labor market outcomes. We expect the labor market to continue to perform well in 2019, so our forecast for 2019 remains unchanged at 3.7%. However, we're forecasting that by 2020, the effects of slower economic growth will have shown up in the labor market, so unemployment will creep up to around 4%. While wages are rising modestly, around 3.1% over the last couple of quarters, this is not the level of wage increase you'd expect in an expansionary economy with a tight labor market. A healthy rate of nominal wage growth or wage uh, growth not adjusted for inflation is around 3.5%. We're just under that. The Bureau of Labor Statistics reports that wage growth in September was 2.9%, so even weaker than the 3.1% that had been benefiting workers for most of this year. Inflation is still modest and below the Federal Reserve's inflation target of 2%. Based on existing data, our previous inflation forecast for 2019 will remain unchanged at 1.8%. However, with slower GDP growth and little wage pressure, we've decreased our inflation forecast for 2020 from 2% to 1.75%. 
Here's a summary of our latest economic forecast. You can find a copy on the CUNA website at www.cuna.org forward slash economics. We've talked about our economic growth, inflation, and unemployment rate forecasts, so now I'd like to turn to the Fed funds rate. The recent pattern that we've seen from the Fed is that it has been decreasing the Fed funds rate in order to sustain economic expansion and to cushion against trade policy uncertainty and slower global growth. We expect that this pattern will continue, so we've changed our forecast to include one rate cut this year and two rate cuts in 2020. By the end of 2019, we expect that the Fed Fund's target range will be between one and a half to one and three quarters percent, and the target range for 2020 will be between one and one and a quarter percent. Finally, CUNY economists also adjusted their forecast on the 10-year Treasury rate from two and three quarters percent in 2019 and 2020 to 1.7 percent in 2019 and 1.75 percent in 2020. Given that it was 1.68% at the end of the third quarter, the expectation is that it'll likely continue around the same level for the rest of the year and reflects heightened investor concerns about future economic growth, low inflation, trade policy uncertainty, and negative interest rates in several developed countries. By the end of 2020, CUNY economists expect the rate might pick up slightly, especially if we start to see the economy bouncing back with the Fed funds rate at around 1%. Now let's look at CUNA's updated credit union forecast. We're seeing signs that general economic conditions are weakening, GDP is slowing, and so is loan growth. There is typically a positive relationship between GDP growth and loan growth. So when GDP increases, that means people tend to be employed, wages tend to rise, consumers have more money in their pockets and feel confident spending and taking out loans, and vice versa. It's not surprising that we're seeing slowing loan growth in this environment. The slowdown in loan growth that we're seeing has been led by a steep decline in auto loans and slower growth in first mortgages, which combined represent 85% of credit union loan portfolio. We expect a continued downward trend in auto loan growth and growth in first mortgages, and while unsecured personal loans may pick up as consumers face liquidity challenges or as they have continued confidence, overall we expect loan growth to decrease. We've changed our credit union loan growth forecast from 7.5% to 6.5% for 2019. And based on our new lower GDP growth forecast and increased unemployment rate in 2020, we've also changed our credit union loan growth forecast, decreasing it from a previously forecasted 7% to 5.5% for 2020. We also changed our forecast for savings. When we see a slowdown in loan growth, the opposite typically occurs with savings growth. We've increased our savings growth forecast from 6% to 7% in 2019 and 65 to 8% in 2020. Membership growth is heavily in influenced by auto loan growth, which has grown tremendously. Just in the last decade, credit union auto loans have grown from 22% of market share to over 32%. During that time, credit union membership has grown from 29% of U.S. population to over 35%. We're already seeing a slowdown in automobile loans, and as I mentioned, we expect auto loan growth to decrease over the next year. In addition, we expect that there will be significant culling of the rolls as members pay off their auto loans. CUNA economists expect to see membership growth rates in 2020 at 2.5% down from 3% growth we previously forecast. We're forecasting ROA to come in at 92 basis points in 2019, up from 87 basis points we'd previously forecast. This is due to the rising interest rate environment at the beginning of the year, share insurance, fund dividends, gains from sales as people re were refinancing, and uh, in interchange income as people have been spending. The most significant change to our ROA forecast comes in 2020, where we're decreasing our forecast from 80 basis points to 75 basis points. As interest rates decrease, credit unions' net interest income will decrease, plus gains on sales will be down next year, as most people who can refinance will have already done so, and interchange income will be down as people are spending less. The U.S. economy is in the late stages of expansion. A recession is not assured, but the likelihood of recession sometime in the next few years has risen substantially. Whether a textbook recession in fact occurs, credit unions should be prepared for a general slowdown in economic growth, a slowdown in loan growth, membership growth, and other accompanying effects on credit union operations. 
One thing I'd like to flag is that this forecast assumes that we make it through the next couple of years without any resolution or worsening of trade tensions. If trade tensions are resolved quickly and favorably, then we could see much more positive outcomes than we forecast when it comes to economic growth, interest rates, loan growth, uh, and deposit growth. If trade tensions, on the other hand, worsen, the risks to this forecast are to the downside and a recession is more likely. We'll see lower growth, lower interest rates, lower loan growth, and stronger deposit growth than we've forecasted. As we wrap up, I'd like to mention that on Wednesday, November 6th, the NCUA will be holding its first Credit Union Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Summit in Alexandria, Virginia. The goal of the summit is to gather credit union folks interested in advancing DEI in the movement. Over the course of the summit, attendees will hear from credit union leaders about current diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts, learn how the NCUA is positioned as a partner to support credit union diversity, and have an opportunity to network with other credit unions committed to advancing DEI and more. If you're interested in attending, you can register on the NCUA website. With that, we've come to the end of our economic update for October 2019. If you'd like additional information, please visit CUNA's website at www.cuna.org forward slash economics or email us at qstat at cuna.coop. Thank you for joining me today and thank you to the CUNA Finance Council for sponsoring this update.